Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I've put together a collection of five festive thrift flips for Christmas in July. Today, I'm going to be working on these little plastic bells. This is actually a sort of vintage -y piece that I found at the thrift store, and I'm actually just wanting to use the bells that you see. So I am going to come in with some scissors and trim off the other items. I'll put these to one side just in case I can use them on another project. So I'm just trimming those off, and then I'm gonna take them outside and spray them with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And then I'm using Dixie Bell's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm going to be painting the outside of the bells and also the inside and on the smaller bells I am just going to be painting the outside. I'm using chalk paint today to paint my bells. I love the texture that it adds and the age, but you could use a spray paint for this if you wanted, if you wanted to make life a little bit easier. But again, it will be just up to you and what look you're trying to achieve. I went with this lovely cream tone to keep things pretty neutral, but you could go super festive. It really is up to you. Next, I wanna add some embellishments to the bell. I'm using Dust Air Dry Clay, and I'm also using this mold here. I will link it in the description below. I'm just gonna work my air dry clay into those details, and I'm just using my thumb to pull off the excess. And then once I have most of that excess removed, I'm going to be flexing that mold to help it release. And then I'm going to carefully pull that clay out. Definitely go slow here so that you don't tear your design. I'm then going to be using my Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue on the back. I'm making sure that I have it all over the back of the design. And then I'm going to place it on the base of the bell. And I'm just making sure that it's all pressed down and adhered. And I will repeat the same process for the other bell as well. I then decided that I wanted to add this little bell mold here. So I'm just working the clay into that design. And then I will flex that mold and carefully pull it out. I'll then add some of my wood glue to the back and I'm going to glue it over the top of the casting that we've already placed down. After a few hours, I came in with that buttercream chalk mineral paint again and I'm just carefully working it into the details. My clay is not completely dry or set, but I like to do this so that I can reduce the possibility of cracking and shrinking. The next day I came in with Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in satin and I sealed my entire bell. This is going to protect my paint but it's also going to be a great base for our next step. If you're in the US and you would like to try Paint Couture products, I have a code for you guys. It's farmhouse75. You will get free shipping on orders of $75 or more and you can use my affiliate link. I just get a little thank you. Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. I'm putting a little bit in a container. I'm then watering it down with a little bit of water, and then I'm going to add it to my bells. So I'm really working it into the details of those molds that we added, and I'm also going to be adding it to the rest of the bell. And I'm going to be using a wet wipe to wipe back some of that excess so that it sits in the details and gives us that wonderful vintage feel. So I actually really love this color. It actually reminds me a little bit of rust as well. And it's going to give us that old world feel. If you don't have this, you could use a brown wax or you could go in the other direction. Maybe you want to paint your bells in a color and then use a white wax. Just depends what look you're going for. I'll be repeating the same process on both of these bells. And then once the glaze is dry, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic. I'm just going to be focusing first on the little bells that we added in the center. And then once we've done that, I'm actually going to get a little bit of that bronze on my finger and I'm going to run it over the details of our castings. It's gonna just sort of highlight those. And then I'm also going to run it around the base of the bell. And then I'm also going to be taking my small artist brush and I'm going to be adding that bronze to just the top part of the bell. 
These could definitely be used as ornaments, but I'm going to add them to this silver tray. Now, I'm not going to paint it. I actually love the way that it looks at the moment. I'm going to take some greenery and I'm going to position it up the top in a pattern that I like. Again, if you're doing this, this will be to your liking. I'm then going to tie those together with a piece of twine and I'm just going to tie a knot. I'm doing it like this so that if I want to take it apart, I can. I'm then going to bend over the ends of our greenery that is wire and I'm just going to hook it over the top top of the tray and then I'm going to tie that greenery to the handle of the tray. I'm then going to thread some twine through the top of my bell and then tie that off so that it's attached. And then I'm going to be positioning it with the greenery. I'm actually going to put the twine underneath the greenery. We want to hide that a little bit and I'm just playing around with the position and when I'm happy with it, I will tie it to the handle to hold it in place. I'll also be attaching the other bell to the top of the tray as well. And you'll just have to have a play with positioning to see where you want it to sit. I'm then going to be adding a longer piece of twine and this is going to be used to attach the smaller little jingle bells that we painted. But before I attach those, I did want to grab what was left of that Van Dyke Brown glaze and add it to my little bells just so that they tie in with the other ones that we did and give it more of an aged finish. I'm then going to put some twine through those and tie them off. Once I have both of those smaller bells tied off and in place, I'll trim off the excess twine. I'm then going to take this ribbon that I got from Costco. I really love the neutral feel that it brings. And I'm just going to create two loops, tie those together. And then I'm going to take the tails, the ends of the ribbon, and I'm going to loop those back through the back of the bow to create a second loop on each side. So I'm repeating the same step on each side so that we have a double loop bow. This is a very basic bow to do, and this will be to your liking. Maybe you want a bit more of an elaborate bow. I wanted to keep mine pretty simple. Once I'm happy with the bow, I will use some twine to tie it to the top of the tray. I'm then going to take these little berry picks that I have and I'm just going to push them through our little bow just for a pop of color. And here's a look at our finished project. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Those bells are completely transformed by the paint and the molds. I think they'd look lovely in a tree, but I also feel like they make a lovely statement tied to this silver tray. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final project today, I'm going to be using this frame that I thrifted. I did want to take the glass and everything out from the center, but I just could not get it to work and I didn't want to accidentally break the glass. So we're going to work with it in today. I'm then going to be using Dixie Bell's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint as my base. And I'm going to give this frame one coat over the entire piece. Next, I'm going to be adding this piece of Would You Bend. I will link this design in the comments. Now, unfortunately, this was a little broken piece, so I definitely want to use it on my project today. When you're using Would You Bend, you first need to heat it up with a hairdryer so that it becomes flexible and malleable. So I like to heat it up on one side and then I flip it over and I heat up the other side. I really don't recommend that you try gluing it down without doing this step. I'm then going to grab my Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue. I picked this up from Bunnings Australia. I'm putting it all over the back and then I'm going to position it up the top of my photo frame and I'm just going to maneuver it until I have it sitting exactly where I want. I'm also going to be grabbing out my hairdryer again. It's a good idea to heat it up again while you have it in position. This helps it to mold to your surface but it also helps that glue to dry a little bit quicker. Next, I'm going to grab that little piece that broke off. I've added some glue to the back of it and now I'm going to put it in position. As you can see, once we have it in place, you really can't tell that it's broken. And I'm of course heating that up as well. 
Next, I'm going to add another coat over the entire frame, paying particular attention to that Would You Bend mold. I'm making sure that I'm working that paint into all of those details. Now, I did use a Would You Bend piece, but you could definitely use a mold and some clay, or you could use some resin in your molds to add some sort of a detail to the top of the frame. Adding this just really takes your project to a whole new level instead of it just being a plain frame from the thrift store. I did think about adding Christmas specific molds to this frame, but I thought it would be good to have the option to have other artworks in this instead when it's not Christmas season. When my paint is completely dry, I'm going to seal it with Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in the color Satin. Again, we are going to be using some glaze. I'm definitely having a lot of fun with these. They are new in store. And once that is completely dry, I'm going to grab that light brown sugar out again, and we are going to apply it to the entire frame. This has a lot of little crevices in the frame, and it's amazing how when you add a glaze, it really brings out those details, particularly also that would you bend detail. I'm going to make sure that I really work it in to the details in that mold, and it's going to bring those out beautifully. If you don't have access to glaze, you could definitely use some sort of a dark wax for this step instead. Just remember to pop a clear wax down first so that you can wipe back as much as you want. Next, I'm going to grab a wet wipe and I'm going to start wiping back some of that excess. You can see that I am still allowing it to sit in the crevices on the frame. It's really highlighting those beautiful details. And also when I go over the top of the details on that would you bend, I'm still letting it sit down into those crevices. Once that glaze was completely dry, I grabbed Paint Couture's Champagne Glaze. This is a metallic glaze, and I'm going to go over the top of the Would You Bend detail that we added, and I'm also going to run some of that product over the rest of the frame. This is going to be a very subtle look. I wanted to give our frame a little bit of a sheen, a little bit of sparkle. It is Christmas after all. This was a subtle but effective way to add that. When my glaze is completely dry, I'm going to grab this Christmas carols book that I thrifted and I'm going to select one of the pieces of music in this one. And I did end up deciding on Joy to the World. I'm going to carefully pull that design out of the book. I'm not going to cut anything off it just in case I want to take it out and use it in another project. But as you can see, it's going to fit really nicely. So I'm going to tear that out of the book, but as I said, I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to fold that excess paper down the bottom so that if I want to use the other side, for example, I can just smooth that out. So I folded it over and then I'm going to position it in the back and put the backing back on. Any excess paint that I have around the side, I will get some sandpaper and I will sand that off to tidy up the back of the frame. I'm also going to add another hanger to the top so that we can have this hanging in portrait style. And here's our finished project. This was a pretty quick and easy flip, but it's definitely effective. It would make beautiful decor for your home or as a gift. For our next project, we're going to be using these little wooden knobs that I had from a previous furniture project. I'm mixing up some of Fusion's hotel robe milk paint. I'm adding equal parts milk paint to water and stirring it really well. And then I'm going to add that milk paint to each of these little handles. Now I started doing this and thought, well, there's already a hole in the bottom. I should really grab a screw to screw into that hole so that it makes it easier for me to hold each of these handles. So definitely a little tip there if you are working with handles, add that screw so that you have something to hold on to. So I'm going to add the milk paint to the entire little knob there and then I'm going to use my heat gun to speed up the drying process. I want a lot of cracking here and chipping so that when I come in with my sandpaper, I get that chippy paint look. Now, if you haven't already guessed or maybe you didn't notice in the photo for this video, we are creating some little tree bases for some bottle brush trees that I picked up at the end of the Christmas season last year. I felt like that these were a lovely rustic way of adding something special to those bottle brush trees that everybody has. 
Once my milk paint was completely dry, I am using some 220 grit sandpaper to sand back the chippy milk paint so we can get that lovely chipped paint worn effect. We're going for a bit of a rustic look here. I'm going to repeat that process for each of these handles. Next, we need to work on our trees. So they come with a little wooden base. I thought I was going to need my pliers to cut them off, but I was able to just sort of screw and work the bases off each of the trees so that the wire stem was showing because that's what we need to be able to work into each of our handles. So once I've done that, I'm going to use some hot glue. I'm going to put it down into the hole where the screw would usually go in the handle. And then I'm going to push the bottle brush tree stem into place. Hot glue will be all that I need for this. This is just a little decor piece. If you're worried about them being able to hold the weight, you could definitely use some super glue instead, but I don't think it's really needed for this project. To finish these off, I'm going to use a Hessian ribbon that I got off Timu. I'm going to cut a length for each of the trees and just tie a simple bow. I went pretty neutral for this, but you could definitely use a more festive ribbon if you wanted. I could imagine these sweet little trees sitting on a tiered stand or even on a coffee table, any sort of vignette. I feel like these would be the sweetest touch. And here's a look at the finished project. I'm really happy with how these little trees turned out. I feel like it's taken something that's quite generic that you can buy in any store and given it a unique touch. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. For our final project today, I'm going to be giving this frame a makeover. I really love the detail on this frame. I feel like it's made out of resin and it's very detailed. So I'm going to go over the top of this with the, that Lux bronze metallic and I'm working it into all of the details. As I said, I really loved the pattern, but the black color was quite dinged up and it, it just did not look that great. So we're going to give it a refresh here. So I'm going to be applying one coat of this, letting it dry, and then I'll be coming in with a second coat, which will really fill in all of those details. Once I've applied two coats of that bronze paint and it's completely dried, I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to work my way around the frame and do some wet distressing so I can bring back some of that black underneath, bring back some of those details and give it that old world worn look. I then decided that I wanted to age this a little bit further, so I'm taking some of Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze, and I'm going to go over the top of the bronze paint. I'm going to work it into all of the details. This is going to give the bronze a tarnished, old and weathered look. I want this to look like an old frame, so I don't want it to look super shiny and perfect. So the glaze is definitely going to help achieve that look. And then once I've applied as much as I want, you can see that I'm going in with a wet wipe and dabbing back some of the excess. Once I'm finished applying the glaze, I'm going to focus on the artwork for the inside. So I've just got the little insert that came with the frame. I'm going to trace around it on some art paper, and then I'm going to cut out the size that I need. Once I've done that, I'm going to take IOD's Holly Glen transfer. This is one of their IOD holiday release transfers. And then I am going to cut out this beautiful deer. I felt like this was absolutely perfect for this frame. I'm taking the backing off and then I'm applying it to the art paper that we cut out. I am going to be losing some of the design over the edges because the paper is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I'm running my transfer tool over the top of the design and then I will pick a corner and I will start rubbing and lifting that plastic away. It's not going to be hard to get this down. 
these transfers love going onto paper. So you can see once I've got it started, it's very easy for me to pull that back. As this is going in a frame behind glass, I'm not going to be doing any sealing. You can see here that I'm just folding over any excess transfer over the sides. Now we need to add this to the frame. So I'm going to clean up the glass first. I'm wiping it and then I'm using a paper towel to get rid of any moisture. And then I'm going to sit it in the frame itself. I'm going to put our artwork in the frame. I'm then going to put some of this backing back in and then we're going to be done. And here's a look at the finished product. This was a quick and easy flip and definitely something that you could do to make festive decor for your home or as gifts. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my next project, I'm going to be working on this little craft box that I thrifted. After cleaning, my first step was to add two coats of Dixie Belle's drop cloth. I didn't mind the green, but it definitely had a lot of dings and nicks in it. So this is going to freshen the piece up. I can imagine this is decor, but I also think that this could be some inspiration for you guys if you're thinking about how to wrap your presents for family and friends. Once my two coats of drop cloth have completely dried, I'm going to take IOD's new Portobello Road stamp. This is a two page design and it is full of beautiful doors and windows and bricks and Victorian scenes. You can really build a unique piece using these stamps and we're going to add them to our little craft box today. I'm going to firstly take the backing of each of the stamps because these are brand new. We need to season them. So I'm taking some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just lightly sanding in one direction over all the stamps, then turning it and sanding once the other way. This is just to help your ink to stick to the stamps. And of course I have to do it for the other set of stamps as well. The first stamp that I'm going to use to build our little scene is this lovely bakery stamp. I love this piece, it's so cute. I'm actually adding it to the plastic backing that comes with the stamp and trimming it to the size that I want. This is a lot more flexible than a thin mount, so that's why I'm using it today. We're of course stamping on a rounded surface. So I have inked up my stamp. I'm going to brace my round box with two paint containers either side, position my stamp where I want it to go, and then carefully press down. So you'll see I always have one hand holding the stamp in place while the other moves and applies some light pressure so that we can get all of that stamp touching our surface. And then when I'm ready, I lift straight up. Next, I want to add a door further along. So here I'm just holding the stamp up to work out which one I want to use. I'm then inking it up, positioning it where I want it to go, and then very carefully pressing down. So you definitely want to take your time while you're doing these, but these are so fun. I almost felt like I was creating a dollhouse of sorts. So once I have that one down, I then moved on to a window and there's a few different window designs to play with here. And you'll see, I just repeat the same steps each time in that I ink up my design and add it to my surface, just taking my time. For the smaller designs like this topiary, I did use a piece of thin mount. It just made it a lot easier than struggling with a larger piece of plastic. Here you can see I'm adding this lovely Victorian lady. I want it to look like she's headed towards that bakery. So I'm pressing her down. And then in each of the packs, you get a mask that's the same shape as each of your stamps. So I'm gonna position that over the top of our Victorian lady. And then you can see I have a door stamp that I'm going to have go over the top because we want it to look like our lady is in front of the door. And once I have the design pressed down, I pull it away and you can see that the ink has been obstructed by the mask. That's how we can get that lovely layered look. So just remember to always clean your masks and put them back when you're done. 
Next, I want to add a window planter to this design. So here you can see I'm just positioning the stamps where I think I want them to go. I'm adding ink to the window planter design first, pressing that down. And once I have a good impression there, I will grab the mask for that particular stamp design. And then I'm adding the window over the top. So again, it will look like that window planter is sitting in front of the window. I'm then going to add two of these sweet little wall lights. These are adorable. So I'm going to add one either side of the window scene that we just created. Next, a little bit further around the box, I'm going to add this sweet stamp with a man walking his dog. And once I have that stamp down, I'm going to use the mask for this particular design. I'm placing it over the top. And then I want to add a door behind the man so it looks like he's walking past the door. So I've positioned that over the top and I'm pressing down carefully and then pulling it away. I'm then going to add a topiary either side of the door, but the topiary is going to go over the top of the dog. So I'm adding that mask again. And once I have that in place, I can add the topiary over the top. So you can really create a multi-layered design here. They are so much fun to use. Here I need to add two masks. So I'm adding the window box mask and also the window. And now I have this bricks stamp that I'm using over the top and I'm going to add that but I'm not going to have it be completely covering our box. I feel like that would be too overwhelming. So I'm going to be working my way around the box design and pressing down my stamp and I'm not always going to use the mask. You can see I'm sort of flexing the stamp and just picking random areas to show that brick. I really think this is quite effective without having to mask up every single design I did and it's just creating that hint of that brick look in our scene. So I'm going to continue making my way around the box, adding that stamp. You can see I don't always ink up the stamp again. Some of the sections are a little bit more faded than others until I have the entire design done. For the lid of our box, I decided to paint it juniper. I really love the two toned look with this. So I'm going to paint the entire lid in that lovely juniper and it's going to take two coats to get the coverage I want. When that's dry, I'm going to be using IOD's new winter adornment stamp. This is another two sheet stamp design. There's so much beautiful greenery and florals. And again, this is a brand new stamp. So I do need to take the backing off and season with 220 grit sandpaper. Remember, this is something you only ever do once when you first open up your brand new stamps. Here you can see I'm just holding the stamp design over the top of the lid and I have selected the lovely winter adornment piece that I want to use. I'm placing it on a plastic backing, inking it up with IOD's permanent black ink and then positioning it on the lid. I want to add the same design, but in reverse. So I'm going to add down the mask for that particular stamp. You can see I've inked up the design and I've turned it around and then I'm going to add it. It's going to create a wreath look. Now in doing this, that means I'm not going to smudge or obscure our design that we already had. The next day I used Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear to seal the entire box. I then used a paper towel to wipe back the excess. And here's our finished box. This was such a fun project to do and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it could definitely make a lovely Christmas decor piece, but also a great idea for creating some really custom gift wrapping for the festive season. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed this video collection and you can find the products used in this video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share this out to a friend that you think might enjoy it.